All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeline of CRM. Joining you from sunny San Diego, where some of the beaches have reopened today. And uh, I know my son's already been out surfing. So, you know, little bits of, there's, there's some rays of light flowing through. And today I'm joined by Kevin Davis, who's the president and sales, and sales management trainer, Top Line Leadership Inc. He's trained over 35,000 uh, sales managers and tens of thousands of salespeople. And he's up in Reno, Tahoe. How are you doing, Kevin? I'm doing great, John. Great to be with you. Yeah, probably not surfing up there, but that's okay. <laughs> no, I went. Uh, I went skiing last week, though. Backcountry. Oh, skiing. you did. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Well, the areas so are closed, so you have to hike to the snow. Oh, you have to hike to the snow. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it's good exercise. Oh yeah. Uh, so what we want to talk about today is, as we said, is uh, you know Kevin has worked with lots and lots of sales managers um, over the years, and now, as we were just discussing before coming on. There's a lot of salespeople out there who are looking to say their sales leaders for leadership and to understand how they should be selling, what they should be doing the same, what they should be doing differently during this very strange uh, period that we're in due to the, the pandemic. So, so, Kevin, what do you think? What is the first thing sales leaders should be looking to do in order to get their salespeople like, focused and maybe you know, take the, take the um, stress levels down a notch? Well, John, according to a, a survey that was run by the Columbia University School of Business, uh, they asked over 25,000 executives and managers why employees don't do what we want them to do. And the top three reasons were they don't know how to do it. They don't know why to do it. And, uh, and they don't know what to do. And out of those three, the number one that was ranked by 99% of respondents, either one or two, was we don't know what to do. And when I share that survey with sales managers, they, they kind of initially, their reaction is, well, no, we, we have a job description and I'm very clear mm -hmm. about telling my salespeople what we expect out of them. Uh, but then I ask, well, you know, do these changes in the marketplace affect the job description. I mean, many of them that I've seen are outdated and no longer mm -hmm. describe what the sales position ought to be doing. And then also there's the added complication that for many sales managers, they only use that type of direction when they hire somebody or when they dehire somebody mm -hmm. and that everywhere in between all the time in between this, what to do is kind of up in the cloud somewhere and um, isn't really utilized by sales managers to drive peak sales performance. So I think uh, now is a particularly important time for sales managers to revisit exactly what you expect your salespeople to, to be doing in terms of the activities, in terms of the skills and the knowledge they need. They might be looking at, uh, at requiring some new prospecting skills, mm -hmm. some uh, uh, more type of uh, customer care, check-in frequency, uh, you know, to retain the existing customers. I mean, and then the question for each person listening is, you know, wh wh how is this whole pandemic going to affect your sales team over the next yeah. three to six months? And then a year from now, are things going to go back to normal? Or if not, where is the new normal? And what do we need to be doing to get there? So, I mean, I ask sales managers that question a lot. I said, well, what do you think is the number one reason? And they, they, I share the top three and I ask them what's number one and it's always why or how. Yeah. Yeah. But not the, the what, but the real reason is the what. And uh, you know, the, of course the why and the how are important too. It's our job as managers to communicate mm -hmm. that. But right now we got to start with the what, what do we expect our salespeople to be doing and, and of course, then teach them how and, and make sure that mm -hmm. they understand the reason why we feel this way, because, uh, you know, things are, are changing and yeah, we have to well, deal with you, a new reality. Yeah. And if you, th if you think about it, right, there are uh, a lot of salespeople right now who are used to going to customers. Yeah. And they can't right now. So maybe they're they're selling virtually for the same time and they're and maybe they're realizing that selling virtually is a skill in itself. 
that you need to learn. And uh, to your point, like the, I think that to your point though, the sales managers need to really put themselves in the shoes of the salesperson and say, okay, the world has suddenly changed dramatically. Um, do, you know, have I given the direction to them? Have I really told them how they should react to this situation, what they should do differently and all of that, rather than just expect everybody to adapt? Yeah, and they are looking to you as a sales team leader for leadership at this mm-hmm. point. And so it's vital that we pay attention to our best salespeople and right. you know, what are what are they doing? And, it, and it's conceivable that what was sales excellence for your company in the past uh, will not be sales excellence in the future. And the sooner you, yeah. you define that and communicate it, uh, you know, the better. I'm obviously communication mm-hmm. is the antidote to fear and uncertainty. And certainly yeah. salespeople are yeah. And I and I think we often too too often we assume people know what to do. And and even and regardless of you know, they're smart people, they're adaptive people or whatever, but we still sometimes assume that they know what to do. And this is a new world because maybe, I mean, for instance, if I'm a salesperson, I'm selling into a particular market segment that's been totally decimated right now, I don't really know what to do. Yeah. I mean, where do I go? Should I switch to another market segment? Should I try? I mean, what should I do? I, I need you to tell me. Yeah, I, I know that. And perhaps the the objective is changing from, you know, how can I schedule a demo to mm-hmm. how can I just get some kind of response and uh, have a different call to action objective and, you know, and, and build for the future. Um, it's mm-hmm. it's a uh, it's a difficult situation, and uh, some of our clients are experiencing opportunities in their funnel that everything is just, I don't mean to say everything. I mean, we have some mm-hmm. clients that obviously are uh, in some very successful fields right now, yeah. doing well right now, but others that have been really, really hurt hurt bad by this. And, uh, you know, so so what is it that they need to be doing differently, clarifying that and communicating that? Yeah, so probably one of the first things a sales manager should be doing is going through uh, with each salesperson, going through the type of places that they sell into today and just saying, okay, let's assess that from the reality of it is today. Is there opportunity still there? Is it an industry segment that's hurting? Is it one that's maybe surviving? Is it one that's doing well? And uh, and say, okay, well, maybe focus over here right now and leave that to the side. Just stay in contact with them and be be sensitive to that. But focus your time over here. Yeah. Yep. Um, What else can you do? And then I think Mm -hmm. that as we work our way out of this, hopefully sooner, but perhaps later, Mm -hmm. uh, what you're going to see is you're going to see hopefully new opportunities in the, in the funnel. So whereas as a sales manager, in January and February and last December, you might have been focused more on helping your salespeople close deals. I think it becomes especially important for early sales cycle coaching. Right. Because those, you know, each when there's less in the funnel, the value of each opportunity mm-hmm. goes up. And if many of them are in the early stages of the funnel, I mean, we as managers have to ask ourselves what message we might have been sending our salespeople in the past if we primarily have been coaching deals at the bottom of the funnel. Yeah. Because that that has sent a message that has taken the t- attention span mm-hmm. of our salespeople away from demand creation, uh, solution yeah. positioning, that your salespeople's skills in those areas might be a little dull as yeah. compared to what they should be. So yeah. a call to action here to coach early in the sales cycle. And I think that, uh, um, that, that your salespeople will be better for it, not just in the coming weeks and months, but years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Better qualification, as you say, better strategizing at the beginning. And to be honest, right now, 
uh, given the situation you're in. If you identify as a sales manager with your salespeople, if you identify the opportunities where you really have a, a good chance of competing or winning, maybe now's the time to over-resource them. Maybe now's the time to really make sure you give yourself every competitive advantage to win those. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I think it's a because I think that's a good point though because it does tend to be as we know a lot of sales managers do tend to gravitate towards the end of the cycle because they love to be you know the super help with the be the super closer, parachuting in to close deals and and now they need to go, go and focus where they should really be focused. And I think the other thing too is it's a great opportunity for coaching, isn't it? I mean you've got to, I mean people. It says people probably have some extra time now, or maybe they're even extra attentive right now. So it's a great time to actually be coaching skills. Well, I mean, when you look at the reason why sales managers in the past have been focused on the end of the sales cycle, mm -hmm. in many cases, it's pressure from above sure. to make the number. Okay. So that's just the reality of, of business today. But um We've just got to get to the to the front end. So maybe that's a, a silver lining in all of this for sales organizations is is it the opportunity to, you know, reschool and retool mm -hmm. our salespeople yeah. in the early phases of of of, of a sales opportunity. Um, you know, uh, because when we managers send that message to our salespeople, see, so the 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 attention, the things that we as managers pay attention to uh send an unspoken message yep. to salespeople about what part of the sales cycle they should be most focused on okay mm -hmm. so if we're focused on the end of the sales cycle our salespeople are going to be focused on the end of the sales cycle mm -hmm. so you're going to find smaller deals getting there again it, it's just kind of a um, yeah a and snowball. you're going to find out you're going to find a lot of junk in the early stages because everybody's focused at the late stages and they just get, oh, I better replenish it. So they just throw a bunch of opportunities in there that aren't really a real opportunities. So your, your, your dropout rate is huge then. Yes, absolutely. And of course, the, the, uh, which is the win rate, right? I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, so let's, let's get more effective, right? It's, Yes. It's uh, less of a less of an issue around efficiency and more about effectiveness. And this is probably a time, as you said, communication is key. So this is probably a time where salespeople would appreciate additional communication. So I mean, sales managers have got to be reaching out a lot more to their salespeople, right? Yes. And I mean, everybody, certainly one of the sources of motivation is that salespeople want to be part of something that's bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. And um you know, so what's what's that mountaintop look like for your sales organization now, right? I mean, what what's that long term goal? What where? You know, how is this pandemic going to change your your goals and the vision of where you want your sales team to be by the end of the calendar year, but also. Mm -hmm you know, into the future beyond that. And ultimately communication is is so important and talking to salespeople and not just in a group setting, but one-on-one, -on -one, sure, how no, you one doing. On one. Mm -hmm. Think about also the example that your that your peak performers and perhaps they're not performing so peak anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and what message that sends to everybody else on the team. Yes, if yes. they throw in the towel, then others yeah. will follow along behind them. And everybody is like lemmings being led off the yeah. cliff. No, that's a good point. Because if they suddenly say, oh, my goodness, like Kevin's struggling right now. And Kevin always like blows his numbers out. And we always like look to Kevin to bring home the big deals. Then well, what chance do I have? Yeah. And so then mm -hmm. you don't get what you need to get. I mean, yeah. So I think also this is great, uh, as you say, one-on-one -on -one communication, but it's a great time for peer learning too, because one of the things that sales managers could do is get their folks together and say, okay, yeah, as I said, maybe you're selling virtually for the first time or more than you've ever sold before. So let's share some of the things that are working. Let's do this together. Let's crack this nut together. 
Absolutely. You know, I mean, if there's there's fewer opportunities that you're working on, then we can get better at each opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And we just get better at, at execution. So there's a lot of things I think that can be done to your point. But it takes that proactive leadership. It takes to say, OK, you know, maybe the world is not going our way in a macro sense right now. But there are lots of things we can do to either get through this the best we can, but also prepare ourselves to be even better coming out of it. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure you, you, you've you heard it. Uh, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond to it. So yeah. how are we going to respond to it? And making sure that we have our message right and communicate that message uh, effectively, persuasively with the reasons why, right? Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely agree. And I think it's a great, uh, and it's also a great message to think if your sales manager is saying to you, okay, you know, let's figure out how we can get stronger in these areas, because that's communicating confidence and that the fact that you are going to get through it and things are going to be okay, as opposed to if everything's all, let's just focus on, you know, today and what's happening with this and what's happening with that. I mean, that that communicates a little bit more panic. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is not not good. Yeah, there's enough even of that though, out there. Even though that may be the message you're getting from above, mm -hmm. uh, you have to filter that one. And yeah, yeah, because what, what's the what's the upside of of making everybody panic? Nothing. Exactly, you know, and ultimately, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> leadership is easy when there's no pandemic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And think of it. What is it when you're talking to a prospect or whatever? What's the first thing they're going to ask you? They're going to ask you, how are things in your company? How are things going in your company? And if you can't answer confidently and say, oh, yeah, they're not going to buy from you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So listen, this is great, Kevin. Then thank you very much for this. Uh, I think some great ideas and some great insights into how to lead better. Um, all of Kevin's information will be in his bio. He's written a number of books that are also available on, on Sales Pop there. You can uh, click on them and purchase them through Amazon. But before we go, Kevin, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your organization. Well, I, uh, I, my area of expertise is uh, best practices for sales team managers. And the clients that I work with are companies that want to grow, but ultimately have come to realize that at least in regards to learning and development, the sales team managers are the most overlooked audience mm -hmm. in most sales organizations. And that means that there's the greatest potential for gain yeah. from that group. So what I do is, is we have an online course called the Sales Manager's Guide to Great. We support it virtually with uh, tools and webinars and distance learning, et cetera, to help sales managers really you know, get and implement a system because it's not just the knowledge and tools, but great sales management is a series of repetitive things that a very proactive focus of things that a sales manager does on a regular basis to make things and make good things happen. And so that's, system is what uh, I help clients to implement. Yeah. And there, and um, I think it's a, it's a fantastic point there about, uh, about being able to, to do, to, to get people trained now. Cause I think there's never a better time than right now to get your sales managers trained. I mean, because they can do it virtually as Kevin just said in this program, but now they probably have a little bit of time. Maybe they have a little bit of extra time. Maybe they're at home. They're not commuting. They're not flying all around the country. So now is maybe the best time to get them into, into sales management training and something that will really benefit you as you come out of this. That's right. So obviously, if any of your viewers would like to talk, it's toplineleadership.com. Uh, and uh, just, just send me an email through our website. Or check out my book on Amazon called The Sales Manager's Guide to Greatness. Yeah. Listen, thanks a lot, Kevin. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.